now that we got our game timer working from 30 seconds down to zero, we want to get these moles to start moving. So it's going to be a little bit more code, but you'll get it used to it as we kind of go. So we're going to want to add a script to each one of these moles. So I'm going to go ahead and drop down my mole container. I'm going to select the first one. Do add a and I'm going to type mole. And I'm going to go ahead and do a new script. And I'll do create and add. And again, as you can see, it shows up here. It also shows up down here. Now I'm going to go ahead and push apply. That way, each one of these now see has the mole script. Remember to open the mole script. You can open it from here by double clicking, or I can click on this and do edit. So again, here's your mole script. And let's just talk about what we have to do. So when we look back in Unity, I'm just going to go in and I'm going to hide these other guys. You can do that in the inspector by doing that, and we'll show them a little bit later. But when we look here at this mall, his visible height, let's say I wanted it to be right there at 2. So when he's shown, look at his Y value is actually 2. And when he's hidden, if I go all the way down underneath, it's like 1. Let's see, 1.5? Let's say 1.6. So his hidden Y height is 1.6, and his visible Y height is 2. I'm going to need to know these two values in order to show and hide each mole. And again, when I want to store some values, I'm normally going to need a variable. So let's go back in here. And let's give us ourselves some space. And I'm going to do show and hide variables. So the first one I'm going to do public float, because I might want to change that inside of Unity. That's why I'm making it public. And I'm going to say visible y height is equal to 2.0f. This is the value that we got from here. This is when my mole is shown. And then again, just like I said, public float hidden y height is equal to 1. It was actually negative 1.6f. And let's put some comments. Value of y when mole is hidden. And up here we'll say value of y when mole is shown. So very simple. So there we go, we have two variables that we're going to use to either show or hide our moles. So let's go ahead and simply hide all of our moles. So what I want to do is when this starts, I want to hide everybody. So this is going to be your introduction to creating a function. So you are a procedure. You see, you've seen start, you've seen update, which are provided to you, but let's go ahead and make our own. So let's make a function, we're going to call it hide the mole. And to do that, we're going to do public void. Now I'm going to call it hide mole with the parentheses and then the brackets. That's how you define your own functions, hide mole. Now what do we want to do when we hide the mole? Pretty much, we want this guy's x to stay where he is, the y will change, and the z to stay where he is. Or if we go back and let's show the other moles. So this is x and is z, we want to stay the same, but we want to change his y. Or this x and z, so each mole has a different x and z that we have to know, but we simply want to change their y. So to do that, back in here, first we need to get where their current position is or where they want to go. So I'm going to make another variable. And for this one, 
I don't want it to be seen in Unity, so I'm going to make it private float. I'm going to call it my new position. And this is the So for this one, I'm going to make it private. Now for x, y, and z, those are three values. Each is a vector. That means this is going to be a vector three. And I'm going to call it my new position. And I'll put my new x, y, z position. And I'll save that. So vector 3 just means x, y, and z. It's a vector in each direction. And that's what gives you the position here. So we're pretty much going to set this when they first, when the mole is first created, when this class is created, or when the game starts and the mole is created, we need to get where the current x, y, and z is. So that is this guy's x, y, and z is different from this guy's x, y, and z, which is different than this guy's x, y, and z. But really, we're looking at their x and their, their z's. The y we're going to change with the visible y height and the hidden y height. But we need to first, when they first are created, we need to get what that value is. So my new x, y, z position. Let's say position to move mole. Current mole. So, what we're going to do, let's go ahead and just do hide mole. If we want to hide mole, what we're going to do is we want to get the current position of his x and z and we want to set the y to this hidden height. So what we're going to do, the way to do that is going to be transform to get the current object we're talking about dot local position is equal to new vector 3 like this. I'm going to put a semicolon at the end. So for the vector 3, I have to give it a current x, the y I want, and a current z. So to get the current x, I'm going to do transform dot local position dot x. And I'll do a comma. The current y I want to do for hide mole is my hidden y height. And I need to get the current z where that mole is located. It's going to be transform dot local position dot z. Let's add in our comment as I did. Set the current position to hidden. So all you're saying is, I'm saying my current position should be, because you know we use transform in there, when we want to move stuff, so I'm saying get my current position, keep me at the same x, move me to the hidden y, and keep me at the same z. That's going to hide our mole. So let's just kind of test this, right? is created. So I'm going to do void awake and again I can just do void like that. So inside of here let's say when this awakes, so anytime this mole kind of wakes up we want to hide them. So inside of here I'm going to just simply call this new procedure that I made. 
or method or function. I'm going to call hide mole. I put my parentheses and I do that. So let's kind of review this before we test it. What we did is we got a visible y height, which was 2.0, which is the y value for when the mole is shown. We got the hidden y height, which is negative 1.6, when the mole is actually hidden underneath the table. We need to know the new position that we want to go. So where's the x, y, and z of that current mole? I made a procedure called hide mole, and I simply said, keep me in the same x, move me to the hidden y, keep me in the same z. That's what that procedure does. And lastly, I added a procedure called awake, which is standard to Unity game objects. And I'm saying, whenever it awakes, hide mole. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now, if I press play, when this awakes, all of these should be hidden because all of these have the mole script. So you can see here this has a mole script and you can see here the visible Y shows up at two and for all of these and I can change those values if I wanted to. So let's go ahead and test it. Let's push play. And all these should hide. And there you go. They're all hidden. So our code is working. Now they're hidden, we want them to actually show up randomly. Any one of these nine should pop up. Well, that's enough for this video. We will do showing the moles um, using our game controller in the next one.